Hey everybody, I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. I'm here in Oakland. The Warriors just beat the Knicks 128 to 100 in New York, and I got three things that we got to talk about from this game. Number one, it's kind of obvious. If you've heard tell of what happened in this contest, you heard about Kevin Durant's incredible fourth quarter. 25 points for Durant in the fourth. He had 41 on the night. The Warriors outscored the Knicks, get this, 47 to 16 in the fourth quarter on Friday. That is obscene. It's really not fair. And what Kevin Durant was doing was definitively not fair. He took a one-footed floater three-pointer. This is stuff that no one else in the NBA even tries. No one else in the NBA can do. And certainly not make. But Kevin Durant does it. And he does it pretty much nightly, but tonight was just a very special night. He was extra Duranty, And uh, the Warriors won because of it. Stephen Curry also had a pretty good game. He had 29 points, so he's continuing his MVP campaign. But tonight was Kevin Durant's night, and ultimately when the Warriors have those two guys going, and it looks like those two guys are going right now, it's going to be almost impossible to beat them. You think about what Curry was able to do on Wednesday, 51 points, spectacular. Durant was pretty damn good himself. You think about what Durant was able to do on Friday, 41 points and spectacular, with Curry being pretty good himself. And Steve Kerr now staggering those guys, meaning one of them is pretty much on the court at any given minute of the 48. I don't know how you beat these guys. I simply do not know how you beat these guys when they are playing at this level. But... A lot of basketball to be played. We'll see how it pans out, but they, uh, they're they doing pretty well. It's it's looking pretty good. Second thing we got to talk about in this game, Clay Thompson, where's he? he? He's the third guy in that group, right? Well, he's shooting 13% from three this year. I know it's six games. I know it's not a lot, but 13%, that's not Clay Thompson. That's me. That's Draymond Green shoots better than that. In fact, Draymond Green made more three-pointers than Clay Thompson tonight. He made two more three-pointers than him tonight. Clay was 0 for 4 from beyond the arc, and... It is going to come. Klay Thompson does n is not a bad shooter all of a sudden. The form doesn't look off. They are just rattling in and out. But this is crazy, what's happening. And when the ball starts to find the bottom of the net, it will do it again and again and again. There is no more incendiary player in the NBA, not even Stephen Curry, than Klay Thompson. And when those three-pointers start to fall, they are going to fall in bunches. If I'm Stephen Curry, I get worried. I get worried about my single-game three-point three-pointers made record because it might fall in the next couple days. Klay Thompson will regress and that means he is going to come back up to where he usually is and that means that he's going to put in, I don't know, 20 three-pointers in a game. It, you could throw a number at me, it wouldn't shock me. Klay Thompson's going to go off here soon. It is just a matter of time. Could be as soon as Sunday. The longer it goes, the bigger it's going to be. That is for sure. Third thing we got to talk about from this game is a guy that we're probably not going to talk about all that much. In fact, you look at the box score, you, you really wouldn't really notice him. But Al I thought Alfonso McKinney really changed the temperature of Friday's game. I thought he was fantastic, if we're just going to be honest. Jonas Jurebko was great off the bench, but I thought Alfonso McKinney was the guy who really brought the game back to Golden State. Yes, Kevin Durant took it from there, but Alfonso McKinney is a guy who wasn't going to be awed by the bright lights because he didn't have time to be awed by the bright lights of Madison Square Garden. A lot of the Warriors on Friday night looked like they were just excited to be there. They wanted to put on a show at MSG. Alfonso McKinney is playing for his job every night he steps on the court. This is a guy who does not have a guaranteed contract after like mid-season. This is a guy who knows that Pat McCall could show up at any minute and take his roster spot. Alfonso McKinney comes out and he has to play his best game every night. And he did that on Friday night. The Warriors were getting pounded on the glass. The Knicks were straight up out playing him in the third corner. The Knicks take a double-digit lead, and they're, just, again, every offensive rebound going right to New York, and they're not a good offensive rebounding team. Steve Kerr puts in Jonas Jarebko, puts in Alfonso McKinney, and McKinney, I thought, was the one who really helped the Warriors clean that up. I don't think the Knicks got another offensive board from the moment McKinney stepped on the court. He is such a good rebounder from the wing. He is such a competent defender at the wing, and he just tries hard, and that is something that is spectacularly talented as the Warriors are, they do not do on a nightly basis. In fact, they weren't doing it. And then he comes in, he gives them a little bit of a spark, and they start going. Things start to work again. The gears start to roll. I thought Alfonso McKinney was fantastic, and he knocked down an open three-point jump shot. If he can play the defense, the kind of defense, the effort-led defense that he played on Friday, and he can knock down an open three-pointer, when the ball finds him in the flow of the offense, he's going to get a lot more playing time. He was fantastic. I thought Jonas Jurebko was really good. The Warriors bench is starting to come together. 
Now, they don't need much of a bench because, again, Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant, Draymond Green was spectacular on the defensive end and knocked down a couple threes himself. Thought Damian Jones was good. There are a lot of positives, right? The Warriors' top-heavy team. But with that bench starting to define itself and Clay Thompson just moments away from going fully nuclear on everybody, yeah, things are starting to come together for this Warriors team. I have a, I have a feeling that they could win a few more games uh, in the coming months. This is... This is truly a ridiculous basketball squad. It is a joy to watch them on a nightly basis, even when they only try for, I don't know, one quarter, as they did on Friday. We'll see if they can try for four quarters, yeah, maybe two, uh, against the Nets on Sunday. They do have the day off in New York and then play an afternoon game uh, the following day, so we'll see how much effort's there. We all know what happens on days off in New York and Los Angeles and Miami. Um, so we will see. Sunday's game could be much more interesting than it should be. And the Nets are a pretty feisty team themselves. So I'm looking forward to that one. We will talk after that game.